Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you're all well this fine day. We are back on the Paladin. And once again, we are in the Motherload. And that can mean only one thing. It's time for part two of our LBUI nameplates guide. Now in part one, we looked at the basics of how to set up our nameplates. From whether we wanted the gold dragon to appear for elites, whether we wanted to remove the level of the mob, what kind of bar style we wanted to pick, all of those kind of good things. Now we're going to take a look at how we override all of that hard work. Style Filters does just that, based on criteria we select, or as LBUI calls it, triggers. A simple cause and effect. So let's say mob A is casting a spell, true, then flash the nameplate. Nice and simple. Now, during the course of this video, we are going to take a look at three ways in which we can use style filters of LBUI. One is the general spell alert, and that's the first one we're going to look at. Now, simply, same as before, trigger and effect, what we're going to be doing is, is mob casting something? True. Can be interrupted? True. Then trigger action. Health turns pink and flashes. That's it. It's as simple as it's going to be. Okay, so let's open up LVUI and see how we do this. Now, we're obviously going to head to nameplates and we're going to go to style filters. And you can drop down the list of filters here and you will see that LVUI already has a lot of filters set up. The most important one will be the target. Now, that affects obviously equals target. That's why you'll notice when we looked in video one at the targeting, literally the only thing we really had was can you put a white box around it with some arrows? Yes or no. You had a list there and that was it for targeting. Even the scaling was selected by going back to style filters. And we did say we we're going to touch on it later. This is when we're touching upon it. So everything you want to set up, everything you want to make the, as unique as you can. For instance, if the mob flashes while you're targeting it, this is where you do it. In the LVUI target that is already set up. Now we do not wish to use that. We are going to create a brand new one. We're going to call it General Spell. Now, the first step is to select our triggers. No, healer, no, 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 no. Not that DPS constantly stand in fire and don't move. By the way, just so you're aware, that does give us a 15% DPS increase. Yeah, okay, that's why we do it. The list is vast with a ton of options. I would suggest playing about with all the different options and seeing what you like, don't like, seeing how things interact with each other. The, we could do a video that goes on probably about two hours and we still wouldn't cover all of the various combinations. There are PvP options here, there are spec options, there's things about whether you want to be tank, healer, DPS, talent systems. There's absolutely ridiculous amount of options you can have here. You know, is something focused? Is it target oh, is it targeted by something else? The literally the list goes on and on and on. Now, if you're worried about changing things in nameplates, you can either create a new profile. So we can copy what we've currently done. We're happy with it. We're not gonna change we we're happy. We're gonna copy that, then we can play about with all these things and not worry about changing things the other alternative is you can simply export your nameplate filters your style filters as you can see on the screen all we need to do is go to export and we can actually say what specific element of LVUI we wish to export we can export the whole thing or we can say actually I just want to do my style filters we can click on that get this text file save that to notepad somewhere save it on your desktop and you're done you don't need to worry about it and we can import it back in if we should make a mistake which of course we're never gonna do we're, we're perfectionists <clears throat> that's why it's taken me so long to record this video <clears throat> anyway we shall swiftly move on so we've set up general spell we know that we want to be told if anything is cast or something's being channeled and more importantly that it can be interrupted so we're gonna go into the spell section and we can see here we've got three groups each with two options. Is the target interruptible or not? Is it casting something or not? Is it channeling something or not? Now we're going to select obviously, yes, we want it to be interruptible. We're also going to select that we want casting and channeling. Those are our triggers. So if it's casting or channeling and it's interruptible, then we want an action to happen. Now the result of that is going to be we want the health color to change. We're gonna let's let's change the bar style as well. Or sorry, let's have some flashing, and why not? As we're going completely crazy, let's have portraits show as well. Now, I wouldn't say you would normally have all of these things as a rule going off in one in one go, but it's just to demonstrate the amount of things that can happen, and also so it'll stand out for you guys that maybe might be 
seeing it for the first time. So let's pull this next set of trash. And in here are two mobs, both that have a cast and a channel. So we should see this in effect. So during that fight, you could see that the mob was casting or channeling. They both triggered the action and it worked great. Fine, we're done. Let's go. We're done. Pack it up. Yeah, we're good. We're done. Mm, but let's, let's think about this. It isn't actually helpful. Is that helping us in any way? Yes, it's telling us we should interrupt something. But let's think about that a little bit more. We're fighting a mob. And it has two spells. It has a Shadow Bolt or an Ice Lance, whatever it may be. It's a quick casting spell. It's just going to do some damage. And then it has Life Sucker. So that's a channeled ability. Now these two spells are very far from equal. Shadow Bolt is going to cast all the time. It's going to hit us. Yep, yeah, maybe we might need to use a personal, etc. But Life Sucker. Life Sucker takes 80% of our health and heals the mob to full. That we need to deal with. So let's look at how we target specific spells using these style fillers. Once again, we're going to set up a new filter for this. The mob we are going to use is the Mech Jockey. We all know, oh, we know of his love of the large mech. So we need to stop him from getting there. Our filter is going to be called Mech J. For this, we need to know either the spell name or the spell ID. How the hell are we meant to know a spell ID, Grim? Panic not, my friend, I shall tell you. There are two ways. One is to have the amazing method dungeon tool, which for dungeons makes life very easy for doing this. As you can see, we have detailed list of all NPCs in the dungeon. And if we were to click on that mob, we can see that we have the NPC ID. This is also shown, by the way, if you hover over a mob, it will show you what the ID is as well. And as you can see, it's the same. But it also shows us in here all the spells and their IDs. Now, if you don't use this tool, or you're looking for, say, a raid mob, then we shall head to the interwebs. And we should go to Wowhead, or say WowDB, whatever it is that you like to use. And we're going to look up our target. In this case, why don't we pick something a little bit different? Let's pick the Shadow Mender. Now, if any of you have done LFR, or it's just certainly in LFR, they're an absolute pain. In that trash, there is a mob called the Shadow Mender. And... What this will do is basically heal all the mobs around it, if it's not targeted and interrupted. So we put in the Shadow Mender, we pick our mob, and in the address bar at the top, you will see a set of numbers. This is the unique ID for that NPC. Now if we look a little bit further down the list for this NPC, we will see the spells and abilities. If we click on one of them, there we go, you can see at the very top, there is another set of numbers. That set of numbers in the address bar is the spell ID or the ability ID. It's a little bit long wind, more long winded, that's for sure, than using the dungeon tool, but it basically does exactly the same thing. Back to our jockey friend. We now have our spell ID that we're interested in. We want to know when he's going to make a run for that mech so we can stop him. As you can see, we've entered the spell ID. And if you want to check that it's confirmed, you just scroll down to the bottom and you will see, there it is, activate mech. Perfect. That's what we want. So let's pull some trash and let's see this in action. So there we can see the alerts flashing. It's telling us the spell is being cast. We stun it. We clean up the rest of the trash. Super easy pull. We move on to the next one. It's those little things that make the difference in a run. You know you've had it where something's just gone slightly wrong. Let's say you got in a mech and all of a sudden the mech's stomping it around and it knocks you into another trash pack and then you get that person that rage quits because oh no we had a wipe we all know that person rage quits leaves depletes the key it's not what we want just having that visual representation that little thing that just says hey just you want to keep an eye out for this we deal with it and it means that it's just the nothingness and we move on to the next one that's what we're looking for that's what all of these things are about right, we've looked at general rules we've looked at targeting specific spells Last of all, we are going to look at creating mob groups and making our own visual guide and alert when we walk through a dungeon. Now, mobs in WoW tend to fall into a number of fixed categories. Very much like the spells you know, for raid bosses, spread out, stack up, those kind of things. You've got the healer, the guy that's going to be healing their allies. You've got the thug, the bruiser, the one that likes to hurt people badly. It might jump out and hit us. It might pull us in. It might thump the tank really hard. We've got the runner. Funny enough, the mech jockey that we've just been talking about. That likes to run out and alert their friends. Or maybe run out and do something. In another way, just that uh, he's going to annoy us somehow. 
Then you've got the AoE. Oh, the AoE friend. The one that likes to put green splodges all over the ground or flick knives at all of us in the party. Now, yes, there are other categories without shadow of a doubt. You've got charmers, fearers, all that kind of thing. But we're going to focus on those four for now. Now, unlike before, we had a lot of fancy things that had to happen before we triggered. Simply the fact that the mob exists is the category we want to change the nameplate. So this mob exists in this category, change the nameplate that is shown. How do we go about doing that? So first we create our filter, same as we've done before. So we have healer created. Now we need to look at the mobs in the dungeon and from that see what fits into our healer category. I would say the refreshment vendor, the one we looked at previously, of course would be the first that springs to mind. So if we look in the method dungeon tool, hover over them, or we can go to wowhead and wowdb, etc. Find the NPC ID, we can enter that into our trigger. And that's it. We don't want anything else. We don't want any other actions. It's literally just this mob is in this category. And if so, change the health color. So you can see we're going to change it to white here. And now any mob with that ID will now change to white. Now we're in a dungeon. That gives us a visual representation that this is a healer. So the other mobs I've already set up. So we'll activate them now. And if we head into the dungeon, we can see just by simply changing the colors, we are gaining a wealth of information that's simple to see and understand very, very quickly. So this pack has a healer and a thug. So if I'm a tank, I will need to have some CDs ready. Just in case. Also, my healer needs to know, okay, the tank may get hit here. Or this is something that is going to run at somebody. And if it's targeting that person, it is going to hurt them. DPS are looking and they're focusing, okay, there's a healer there. We need to make sure that's interrupted, like John in the spot, so it doesn't heal that big tank hurter. And we need to then burn them down, then we swap on to the big guy. That data is simply collected by us by looking at the colours of those mobs. We then look at the next pack. So now if I'm the healer, okay, there's no big hurt guy in there, but I know there's an AoE. So now I know the whole group's going to receive it. So I need to be looking at my AoE. I need to be making sure everybody's available to be topped up. The colours, the categories, the things you that you are alerted to using your nameplates, they all need to be based on your personal preferences. We spoke about this in the first video, but there's no one UI that is going to be perfect for everyone. Some like everything hidden, super clean, don't show action bars, show nothing. Others like six alerts, all for the same thing, of varying sizes around various parts of their screen, so they are not going to miss it. That is why UI mods are so good. Doesn't matter how good Blizzard make their UI, it is never going to fit for everybody. All I can say is go and play with these tools and see what works for you. Yes, you may say standing for an hour or two, setting up categories for mobs and dungeons is boring, but it's no different to simming your character or standing in front of a target dummy. It's all about min-maxing your experience, giving you the most amount of data so that when you go into a dungeon, you know your rotation because you've been at the target dummy. It's just muscle memory. You know your character is the best it can be because you have simmed all of its gear. And now I know that what I need to interrupt, what I don't need to interrupt, what I need to focus, what I need to don't focus, those sort of things. Just by walking into a dungeon. The other thing to consider is, obviously, if we'd set this up at the very beginning of BFA... This wouldn't be a problem. These dungeons have been here now ever since the very first dawning days of the expansion. So if we had been able to set this up beforehand, this would have stayed with us now for a number of years and been extremely helpful. So yes, it would have taken us, say, an hour, two hours to set everything up. But once it was done, it was done and it would stay with us forever. So that is it, ladies and gentlemen. We are done. We are finished with LVUI nameplates. Part 1, Part 2 are now complete. Now, I am currently building all this nameplate filters for all of the dungeons in BFA, mostly to educate myself as much as anybody else on all the different nuances, all the different things that go into what we can do, how we can do it, how we can best just make it work, make it as fast as possible. So I'm going through all of that now for BFA. If you would like that, please, by all means, put a comment down below. Let me know and I'll post that up. It's just going to be the nameplate filters, so you don't need to worry about overwriting your UI with mine. It's just going to be for the filters. The reason I'm doing this is so I can educate myself, learn everything that I can possibly learn, so that when we go into Shadowlands, literally, on launch, I can have all of these filters set up for all of the dungeons, and then 
if you would like it all you need to do is just simply change the sliders for different colors different things you'd like to see um, to make it work the best for you Whew. have a great day everyone thank you for watching comment in and thank you everybody that subscribed you are amazing and i'll catch you all later have a great one